Hello, welcome to Core IQ, where we talk about the stuff we got to know for a successful, you know, super achiever life, but that are not always taught in school. Things like goal setting, time management, negotiation, anger management, all that kind of stuff. And I'm here with Jill Pillsbury to talk about resumes. Uh, resume building is a big deal. It is a big uh, deal. It's a big deal for me because in my business, um, I'm essentially hired you know, dozens of times a year, and it's all based upon the resume. So it's something we take pretty seriously, and everybody has to take seriously if you're, particularly if you're in the job market. So you ready to go? I'm ready. All right. So the first thing is kind of obvious, but it's amazing how people, you know, some people miss it. That's your full contact information. Uh, I've gotten resumes where it's just like a name and an email address. It's a little weak because, right. you know, there's this thing called a telephone. I might want to call someone. That's exactly right, Randy. I think your header of your resume is so important. Big and bold and clearly stated is your name, most important. And you need to let people know how to follow up and get a hold of you. So that means address, telephone number, and email. And then the next thing is your previous experience. Obviously, very important to outline where and with whom and your positions, where you worked before. Right. And I think, you know, sort of the old adage is that you do that chronologically. So your most current job should be the first and so on. Do you agree with that, Randy? I do agree with that. And along with that is your responsibilities. What were your duties? I mean, you might have worked for uh, McDonald's Corporation, but were you like the CEO or were you the French fry captain? I mean, what were your duties? Right, both great. I mean, again, a resume that you're going to, you know, people are going to create resumes whether you're looking to go get a job um, at, the, at the local coffee shop or go work at the garden center or a CEO. So let's make sure that we're clear this is a life skill for everyone and all the experience is, is relevant and important in your world. It's relevant to you. Yeah. What do you think about like tailoring that for the job you're applying to? Yeah, I think that's a, a great idea. I think number one, it brings you back to your resume to check in and keep it current and updated just from a chronological order. And secondly, I think that you may be applying for a, a PR job or a sales job or a waitress job at any certain point in your life and you need to tweak your resume a little bit so that it speaks to your audience. Yeah, perfect. So we're going to go off script for a minute, but you know, this example doesn't have a picture. I've gotten resumes with pictures. I mean, what do you think about adding a picture or not? You know, I think for certain industries, that's probably appropriate if you're going into media or some sort of publicity where that is relevant to the job you're interviewing for, then by all means. But generally speaking, I think um, a safer bet is to be traditional and not include a photo. Yeah, I'll buy that. Okay, and the next point here is to use action verbs to talk about what you know what you're doing. I mean, what do you think about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I mean, you're selling yourself. This is step one. And you're not there to resonate and personalize your resume. So the verbiage that you choose, they need to be powerful, attention grabbing, quantitative kind of words. Um, again, not big words that seem superfluous or um, inflated, but really hard hitting. Get your point across. Yeah, and along with that are kind of the quantitative points, you know, really kind of saying, hey, you know, I, you know, through my work, sales went from X dollars to Y dollars and, and any kind of facts or figures are good too. Right, for sure, for sure. Again, you're selling yourself. So boast about yourself, pat yourself on the back. This is a chance to highlight your achievements. Yeah, you're not gonna have your mom or dad there to brag for you, so you gotta do it yourself. You gotta lay it out here, hey, I'm, I'm I can do a great job here, and here are the facts and figures to, to send that message. Yeah, they need to be relevant to the job you're interviewing for so that somebody can say, wow, this person has past experience. They've accomplished this. They've led. They've produced. They've sold. They've worked with the public. Whatever it is, be specific about those accomplishments. Yeah. Okay. And then the next thing is education. I mean, education's a big deal. Um, I was just in federal court a couple weeks ago and I started with high school and went right up yeah. through it. You know, any thoughts about laying out the uh, education? Yeah, I think education is, is super important for a couple reasons. And one sort of secondary um, 
uh, impact of, of your education would be any alumni affiliations, whether it be high school or college. Um, uh, something that resonates and personalizes your resume is great. Okay, and then the last one here are any kind of certifications or special awards you know, brag about it. I, I tell my kids, look, you were a student body president, or you right. were an Eagle Scout, you know, put it out there. Right. You know, people aren't going to have, you know, mental telepathy unless you, you know, lay out, hey, I'm on the ball here. Right, right. People want to know and see the skills and interests that you have. And, and your education obviously shows your skill level. Um, awards and achievements can show anything from achievements, just that, or interests. You yeah. know, if you're winning awards for different kinds of clubs and extracurricular activities, that that creates a, a feeling of personal power, right? Like now you're getting off the paper a little bit and you're not just a bunch of words, but you're a person that, you know, someone can resonate with you on the other end. You've hobbies and interests and all kinds of things going on. Exactly. Yeah. So it's basically, that's it. I mean, there's some simple steps. It's astounding how many people miss one of these steps. But if you keep with this essential format or these points, and you could rearrange them, you might want to put your education first and or, or whatever. Th those are personal preferences. But the essential thing is to make sure all of those elements are there somewhere. Yes. And I think the other thing I would add is I think it's a really good idea to give your resume to somebody that you trust to proofread it and give you input. And that could be a parent. It could be a peer. A it could coach. be a coach, an advisor at school, a counselor. Friend, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. I think that's it. All right. So good luck with your resume building and thanks for watching Core IQ. Make sure you like it and share it. Let, you know, get in a discussion about it and we'll see you on the next episode.